some seed trays left in laid in the road that look brand new. So I'm just uh, I've decided I need to get some stuff from BHA. It's the start of second of March. Uh, we normally get the uh, sort of monthly order. Well, we, we traditionally ordered on the first Tuesday of the month, so I sort of try to do that. And, uh, It'll come on the Thursday or possibly Wednesday next week if I order it either. Like I might do it tomorrow, but I don't want it to come this week particularly. Well, it's a Friday tomorrow anyway, but it's a bit annoying that as far as no, I'm taking some uh, Limmy heifers to Malton tomorrow if all goes smoothly. And in theory, I could have just stopped and got some bags then but uh, it's easier said than done when you got the trailer on because you can't always get parked because you, you need a bit, bit more space it, the, it's the one failing with uh, Kirby Moorside actually that uh, you um, there's no real parking just a little tiny day by thing on the edge of the road. Just got a message. I was trying to read it without really looking at it. Scottish Power have sent a £150 energy discount scheme. Now, what that is, it's, it's all very confusing. I've got £150, and what that is, it's the alternative energy. It's for properties that don't have gas or rely on solid fuel for the bulk of their heating, as far as I know. Then there's a, a secondary thing coming up where you can you can get I think it's up to four hundred pound from like an extra payment to partly offset the the bump up in energy prices, which you had, in our case you had to apply for that uh, by. In a domestic, on a domestic tariff, they, they paid that onto the uh, electric bill, so your, your electric bill was reduced by four hundred pound or whatever. I don't know. It's always four hundred pound. So anyway, I did apply for that, which is so fast. I know that's a separate thing to the uh, the one that Scottish Power said. I mean. Why is it so confusing? Why if they're going to do it? Why do they make it so there's all kinds of different ways it might ah, might work? It's ridiculous. Uh, but I think a lot of people won't, won't get that because they won't apply for it, or they haven't applied for it. Because I only found out by well, to be honest, it was through a Facebook group messaging about it. Anyway, we've had. Uh, Quite a wintry few days already. The last last week or so has been cold and showery rain. And yesterday we had about seven millimeters. It was not insignificant, <coughs> but to be, I mean, to be fair, we sort of want the rain within reason. I said better now than uh, turnout time or something. It's, it is quite surprised how well it's dried up today because it's not today it's the the north wind has, has gone and it, it's the first week of march so the sun's getting a bit of power to it and uh so it's how the roads have all dried up but uh, this is only a temporary phase because by the weekend it's going to turn quite 
possible snow showers again. It worsened and worsened this past, and that lasts most of next week. But after that, it does look a bit more potentially a bit warmer and uh, better again. Not about dry, but certainly less cold. So we shall see. I mean, I'm not all that bothered to be honest. I, have, I would like to be getting on with story spreading, but the pitch isn't full. If it, if it were to come very wet, I might have to draw some water out. But uh, it would have been nice in a way if the story was on now. I don't mind admitting I wish I'd done, done some now. I was deliberately holding off because I didn't really want to spread it until into March and get the best of the fertiliser from it. Because uh, if you spread it in February, it just sort of washes out, washes out in theory. Or in fact, I was more worried that it was just going to sit there drying up in the wind till February because we had a very dry February. Something else funny happened this morning. A bunch of sort of high spec like four wheel drive cars came past the house and they, I thought oh they're going to go around by the uh, green lane behind Grange Farm but instead they went up on the moor straight up straight up the gamekeeper's track up to the very top and then uh, you couldn't see where they went they kept on going somewhere up there so I thought well it, it's not the first time someone's done that they've gone up the track and they have to keep going because they can't turn around and come back with that it wasn't that because they just kept going somewhere and it's not the first time that someone's deliberately done that and sort of traversed across the moor somewhere and uh, rejoined a track somewhere in either Bearsdale or conceivably Rudland looks like they're doing more butts here but refurbishment Not a nice job. Well, anyway, I, th I was like, well, they've probably gone way over to, I don't know, Bearsdale. You can probably can certainly join the, the road back down around the top of Bearsdale if you know where you're going. But I wouldn't like to do it this time of year. It's not like the middle of summer. And it, to say the least, it's very rough going. There's like hidden rocks in there. there and, boggy bits that don't look particularly boggy even if you know what looks boggy but if they're from London or somewhere who knows they're not going to know what what, what boggy bits look like are they but anyway after about possibly nearly two hours actually, it was about half eleven to twelve they, go, they all came back down again in like a, a, a line very close together and not particularly fast came out so I think either they've completely copped up and didn't know what they were doing or conceivably they were, they were maybe recording for Top Gear or something like that, you know, an advert maybe. So we, anyway, I did, I sent a message to the gamekeepers about them. I think they knew all about it because I think he was up there actually, but I'm not 100% sure. And he's read the message but he hasn't answered it so I don't know what, what, what that's all about. Just odd he hasn't said anything, unless he was deliberately not saying anything, because he thought I might, <coughs> maybe say, say Jeremy Clarkson was here, I don't suppose he is, but you know, they may be known, they're sort of sworn to secrecy as it were, because it's all too easy to let it slip somewhere, and uh, you would have like 20 groupies or something there, <coughs> so I don't know, he may probably tell me eventually what was going on, if it was le legitimate, so we say. And then another thing going on, since I'm talking about stuff, I've had a very weird time with my sheep lambing this year. We started off, at the, actually the first lamb was on the 31st of January. And as far as I know, it was because I didn't get my tubs out as soon as I normally do. I was nearly about two weeks later because of the drought last year. Um, and anyway, it wasn't that. It's not unusual to get an odd one then. To be fair, January is late January, <coughs> and I thought, oh, a bit of maybe one or two lamb. But no, there was about twelve lambed, 
and they've all been alright because it was quite decent weather through February. So there's some quite big lambs already. And then we seem to be having like another batch lambing now. Well, that shouldn't be happening. They definitely aren't from my truck because they don't even look like they, they, they aren't Texels or Suffolk. They look, they have like blotchy marks on their faces. And my first thought was Zwart bleeds or something like that. I don't even know how you say it. That's a Dutch bit, but I don't think it is. There's another possibility is Hampshire. The, the very distinctive faces, and they're, they're mostly all the same, although some are less pronounced than others. So somebody else's tub has been in with them, and I think it's quite possible somebody else's tub was in with them before, because this the earlier batch at the start of February just seemed to go on and on and on. I couldn't quite believe it, that uh, there could be that many. That, uh, because I, I thought, well, I knew when the tub was taken out, but there shouldn't have been any really after about the 10th of February. And, and most of them were in that first week or so, so it was possible. But there was quite a few a after that. Uh, so I, th I think there must be at least uh, 30 lambs already. And in, in itself, that's not really a problem, but there's a bit of a management issue with it. I'm still. Uh, I haven't. Uh, I would normally have given mine the Heptavac jab about the end of February and I was sort of delaying it because there was all these little tiddly lambs. So, I mean, you can still jab the mothers when they've got lambs. They might even still do some good. But they shouldn't have really been done about the last week of Feb. Now it's the first week of March, it's been a bit too rainy and we're still getting lambs lambing. Can you show you how's lambing? So, you don't particularly want to be mistraining them about when the uh, about to lamb. So it's all a bit of a mystery. I think obviously somebody's tub has got in at least once, possibly twice, or even more than that, and they haven't somehow they've got them out. Like early in the morning or something and I've I've not noticed they were in. I mean I didn't if you think like back in September you've just weighed the lambs you're more worried about whether they've got out or something the first few days, so <coughs> it's um, I might not have gone over there every day. So I, I'm assuming that somebody's tubs have been on the road and got in with mine, or somebody might have like let them in because they thought they were unsafe on the road. Something like that. actually let them in rather than got in, or because they assumed oh there's some sheep there that should be in with them. I don't know, I mean, it's certainly always possible they could have got in, one way or another. But it, this has never happened before, because so we don't join anybody else's sheep. I mean, really, there aren't anyone's anywhere near, there aren't, not, not sort of across the road or out else. So they come along the road from some way off, from somewhere. Although, having said that, I shouldn't name any names, but somebody sometimes has kept their tubs in a paddock quite nearby, it could be, I think they're out of there, and I think they've got out at least twice. It's still really dead here, I thought there might have been a bit of activity this week. It is, um, <coughs> I think half term was last week, wasn't it? The set, the, it sort of spread over two weeks because somewhere one week, somewhere the week after. I think it's not half term now, so that, it's been a bit buddly along there, people walking along. Because honestly, it's, uh, it's, it's become somewhere I wouldn't remotely like to live. I mean, there was a time when I, I quite liked the idea of it, because we used to live down here in the 60s, late 60s. But even then it was a little bit like it is now, we were sort of a tourist show place with quite limited facilities, if you like. I mean, there's like gift shops and things. There's, there isn't even a, the most basic shop for sensible stuff like a loaf of bread or some milk. 
not as much of a problem nowadays because you could have stuff delivered or whatever and on buy online and things like that if you were if you were unable to drive for any reason. Trees fell there. Oh, I know what they're doing. They're taking ash trees out. Encounter them again tomorrow, as for probably, unless they're finished or something. The, the common there, it's absolutely covered in uh, ash trees in various stages of decline. <coughs> From the, I think it's called ash wilt, is that right? Fraxin or something or other, I don't know. It isn't something they can stop, but the, the, the problem is, well, there's two reasons why they want felling. They're, they're falling all over the place onto the road and things. And uh, if you get them at this stage when they're just dying, they're, they're quite a valuable uh, logs for logs and things. Not much was used for hotels. So uh, most of the ones like on there, they're only like quite scrubby anyway. But um, what is true, it'll make a big difference to what, what's on the ground, like uh, wildflowers and all. So it'll be quite interesting to see what happens. I mean, that was going to happen anyway. As the trees died, the light was going to reach the floor. But they're going in there, like, removing them, so it's a more sudden and pronounced effect, you would assume. The daffies are out down here about. Even the bigger ones there, look. We have a few uh, small ones. In fact, I've seen some wild ones just starting to open, which is very early for them. Uh, it's not the first time they've been out by about mid-March. Quiet, isn't it? I'm needing some stuff from BATA and uh, even though I went shopping the uh, day before yesterday I might just nip in the town and get a couple of cakes or something because I didn't really when I went to uh, I went to Gisborne I really just went to the supermarket I didn't go into the uh, town so I, I mean I have some cake but not really enough I would just see what I'm getting there Then uh, I'll go there first before schools turn out or whatever.
quite like uh, Kirby Moore's side, but uh, one little niggle is that the, the fuel is really only that one garage. And to be fair, it's usually one of the cheaper ones, but they don't take uh, fuel cards, so. Funny if they did there. Don't suppose they will. It's, I mean, I thought they nearly all took them when I, when I got my fuel card, but that one, the one in Gisborne does, I ain't quite sure about Pickering. I think I thought they did, but I haven't really fueled up there yet. I'll, give it, I'll try and take note when I go past tomorrow. There's a very nice mohawk in the shop. I just can't see a thing. Well, up here now. I don't like to uh, go around the roundabout at the top because, uh, to be frank, I have to, uh, it's so tight that with this I have to do a shunt. Ford range is a big ugly thing, isn't it? And he's got like big tyres on as well, so it accentuates it. Funny, I mean, I always thought that the guy Suzu, it's a big pickup, but it sort of uh, carries its, there's one there, it carries its size gracefully, if you know what I mean. Whereas the Ford, it's like they decided to make it look as big and ugly as possible. People with Fords may disagree.
there's a few bikes about. I suppose roads have had a bit of a wash off. They're relatively dry. It's actually quite busy to now is what it was. It's about half three. Right, you can go. They've had a big uh, reorganisation in there. They've got some bigger trolleys which I approve of because often if you wanted more than about half a dozen bags it wasn't, uh, they weren't very big enough. And then they've taken all the, the main feed bags to the back of the store, which actually makes sense because that's where they need the access with the uh, pallet fork things. Take them off, and anyway, then there's a more the smaller stuff is moved forward in the store. So I think that's probably all right as well. It was a bit weird at first; you didn't know where anything was. I'm sure it'll become more obvious.